Ah, oh, g'day, welcome to Farming Live Australia. This video is about renewable energy coming to our area and unfortunately it's going to be in a big way. The whole thing started with a switching station or substation put in last year and when I first heard about it I thought oh well fair enough you know like there has to be a power system somehow. Then reality set in and the cars were coming up every day from down the bottom and they come up the range and it's only a single lane road and they wrecked the road really quickly. They had cement trucks coming and going seven days a week, tons and tons of concrete and that between the trucks and the workers it just destroyed our road. I think a smarter way to do it would have been to put the infrastructure in meaning the roads etc and fix them properly first then build the substation but they didn't do that. And from there, the whole thing has snowballed. And now we're faced with the powers that be wanting to build wind farms, battery storage areas, which has got the locals in an absolute uproar. It's all becoming a big worry. The first I sort of heard of all this renewable energy stuff was when I started to see signs pop up. The first ones I saw were in town. At that stage, I heard there was going to be, you know, a few turbines put somewhere, but didn't take much notice, didn't know much about it. And where that first initial lot of turbines was doesn't really affect me at all. I won't be able to see them. They're quite away, away from our actual area where the people live and no one was really too upset. And the other thing was that the company doing it did come and consult with the locals. And I mean, they didn't say they weren't gonna do it or anything, but they came and they were quite open and honest about what their intentions were. I th and I think a lot of people thought they were fairly approachable and, and no one was really alarmed because it wasn't going to be right in their backyard. That has all changed now. The local people have formed an action group and I did a bit of an interview with the chairperson of that group and you'll see that a bit later in the video. I'm standing at the turn off to the work site where the substation, switching station, whatever you want to call it, has been built. I don't know if this same road will be used to build the battery storage system, but you can see by all the signs here, the locals really don't want it. This is the substation and what you can see from the main road now. This sign amused me a bit. It says the name of the substation and the safe for life bit, that really tickled my fancy. It seems now as if everything has to have a sign. Just recently, we attended a meeting with two of the people involved in the, in the battery storage project, and they are also involved in the proposed wind farm that is gonna be put very close to the center of our area. And I asked them if I could do an interview, and particularly the bloke in the gray shirt, no way did he want me to film him. And after a lot of pressure, and to be honest, I was fairly obnoxious and sort of said, well, look, even if I only take a film of you driving off down the road to avoid me, I'm going to film you, which I suppose is a bit rude, but I sort of figured they were fair game. They'd come there to answer questions and people had questions. All that guy really wanted to say was, we've come here to consult and listen to what you got to say. And what I wanted to know was what they were going to do about what the people said. And you can make up your own mind after you see the interview, what you think is going to happen. This was the scene when I arrived at the meeting and this is a good representation of the local people. You probably think, well, there's not many people there. The main reason for that is because there isn't many local people. That's about all the people who there are up here, other than weekend warriors that just come and go now and again. So, what is your name? So, my name's Alex Graham. Our role is to come in towards the end of, uh, of a development, typically, and our specialties is financing and building and owning. Yeah. Okay. And you realise that most of the community here don't want this development to go ahead? And that's why we're here today. What do you hope will be the outcome for today? Hopefully to answer some questions and to get... This meeting today, could it conceivably change the outcome of the whole thing? When you say the whole thing, do you... Well, what I mean is, could it... If the locals say to you, look, we just don't want it here, are you prepared to pack your bags and just go away and leave us alone? 
we're part, part of why we're here today is to listen to the community, to get feedback. As part. If the whole community said to you, for instance, we just don't want any part of it here whatsoever, do you think the powers that be would just pack their bags and go away? So as, as part of why we're here today is to listen to the community. I need to hear the questions and again, you know, tag energy as well as to come in later in the development. So that's why yep. we're here. Okay, I'll put it a different way. You're here to consult, is that correct? Yes, that's why we're here today. And if you consult, will you actually take any actions from that consultation? Or will you just say you have consulted and that's all you have to do? So, first stage is to hear back from the community. Yep. And that's why we're here today. And I think there's, there's a lot of work that's been going recently to get that feedback yep. to improve on the past. So first stage is to listen to what the community concerns are yep. and then we try and work together yeah, through I'd... those issues. I, I, the first stage is to hear from the community what, what worries them. You do sort of understand that the community on a whole just wants no part of it. So, At this stage it became obvious I wasn't going to get a straight answer. <laughs> And in defence of the Blake, he did tell me right from the word go that I should contact their media people and give them all my questions and then they would work out what the answer should be and go from there. I obviously didn't want to do that because I was trying to get some honest, truthful answers. They'd come along to basically tell a few locals, oh, they, you know, oh, it's not like that and, oh, we can just change a few little things and you're going to be happy. And that's not how it worked out. And the other thing is, I don't think that bloke in particular was allowed to say anything anyway. I think he works for a company and they've said to him, look, you're not a media person. You can answer a few questions and listen to what the hillbillies have got to say, but that's where it ends. Anyway, let's get on to the next bloke. Uh, Hi. Justin Keith is my name. I'm a uh, developer. Yep. So uh, I've come from a construction background. Okay. Of wind turbines. Yep. Wind farms. And, uh, and uh, teamed up with the landowners here at Mount Fox. Yep. Uh, to to yep. help them take this project through the, the development process. Okay. There's sort of really three things. First off, they've built a, a switch hub. Then there's going to be a battery storage area, as I understand it, is that correct? And ultimately, there's going to be a wind farm. With how many turbines? Uh, at the moment, we're looking at about um, 200 and something megawatts. So this is how many turbines area. will that be? Uh, depending on the turbine size. Yep. So yeah, anything up to 60 odd turbines. 60 turbines. 40, 40, 47 turbines. Now. How many acres or, or hectares does each turbine site take up? Depends on the contours, yep. so how much cut and fill we need to do. Right. So there needs to be a, a hard stand for a crane to operate on. Okay. So whatever clearing is done, then uh, that's for the construction process, and then we rehabilitate back in. Okay. So, yep. So you know, there is a disturbance footprint, and then there's a rehabilitation footprint. Okay. So you basically go to the landholders and you try and come to some sort of an agreement over terms so you can build the, the infrastructure, is that correct? That's correct. Okay. And, um, and how many landholders would you have to deal with? No, no, depends where we are. So, here? here. Uh, two landowners and then there's the immediate you know, impact of the construction and then yeah. we go out from right. there for the neighbours. So here today there looks to be a fair bit of opposition yeah. to what you want to do. Is that opposition likely to change the whole way it's done? As I mentioned to you earlier, you know, there's some, some fringe stuff around the project. Yep. These, these projects are going to get built. Yep. Um, so they're going to be built and that, that's sort of... How, how it interfaces with the, the, the immediate community yep. is what we're here to talk about. Yep. Alright, thanks a lot for your time. So that bloke was a lot more forthcoming. And as you can see, he's a developer. He goes around and makes the deals and puts it all together, I suppose. And one thing he did say, and... I had a private conversation with him and he said it, and he said it again on film, it would go ahead and the only thing that was in question was some fringe details. All the locals probably can change is little things like, oh no, we want more trees put there or, you know, something like that. But to actually get them to say, well, there's too much opposition, uh, we'll just go somewhere else, he doesn't believe that's going to happen. But that's my perception of it anyway.
Let's move on and see what the local opposition has to say. I'm here today talking with Kim. Could you tell us what your role is in this renewable energy argument up here? Certainly. Um, uh, I'm the chair of the Michael Creek Valley Action Group here at Mount Fox. We formed a proposal for a BES, and a BES is a battery energy storage system um, that is proposed to go in um, not very far from where I'm living in the middle of Mount Fox. This BES, is that your main concern with this whole renewable energy network that they're putting at Mount Fox? No. Here at Mount Fox, the BES is associated with some wind farms, wind oh. turbines that we're also opposed to. Originally, the proposal was for the BES and the wind turbines to be done at once. The developers have pulled out the best to do that first and where they're proposing to put the best is right in our catchment for our water. That's what we're opposing initially, the placement of this best. Why are people against these batteries? There's many facets to their objections. For the potential danger that they cause, I guess is their very first concern. It's being placed in the catchment area. So if there is a fire or a, a chemical catastrophe, we're very concerned that it's going to impact on, on our water supply. This notice of an intention to seek a change of use for a proposed development application was posted on the fence a couple of months ago of the property where the development is proposed for and that decision is going to be made in council very soon. One thing I noticed on the development application that initially they're only going for a relatively small area for the batteries, but I noticed that the, appro the approval they are seeking is much, much larger. What, what is behind that, do you think? I'm not sure. The BES itself is, um, uh, will take up about six um, hectares, which isn't a lot, yep. uh, and that includes its infrastructure and there's a substation associated with it, but they want to a material change of use over um, 1,035 hectares. So, you know, quite a considerable amount. I can only guess that that the BES in its current form, which is 164 batteries, has the potential to expand into a much larger facility. Thanks a lot for your time today, Kim. I'm going to be keeping an eye on the unfolding story and naturally as I'm involved, I'll be very interested to see how it all turns out. Yes, well, very soon, I believe the council will be voting on the whether or not the developer gets their material change of use. Right. So I think that will be our next big thing that, and we'll know whether or not that best will, will go ahead. We've made it very clear to the council, however, that if they do approve the material change of use for the best, that we will appeal it, the, yep. that decision. Okay. So All thank right, you, John. Well, yep, thanks we'll a lot keep for a that. close eye on it. Okay. I took a bit of aerial footage of the new switching station come substation and the country around the whole thing where the best is proposed to go to give you some idea of what sort of country they'll be dealing with to give you some perspective how big this substation is that tower on your screen on the left hand side is a full size transmission tower this is the country that they'll be dealing with, all this bush here. And I'm not saying by any means that they're going to clear all that bush or anything like that. I don't know. But they're certainly going to have to clear a large portion of it to do what they want to do. When I did the interviews, the guy with the check shirt told me that they would first off clear the country then do the work they needed to do and then rehabilitate the country i'm just wondering how you replace trees so mature as this when you rehabilitate i mean i guess they can grow back eventually but how long is it going to be naked for the substation down to the best and then down to where this arrow is which is the lowest point where michael creek is is all downhill and that's got a lot of people very worried. The people who are promoting the project assure everyone who wants to listen that they have fail safes in place and that the risks are very low. The attitude of the local people is, well, humanity's got it wrong in the past and they don't want to 
be the scapegoats if it goes wrong again. After talking to people, I really think the problem with the batteries is more where they're placed than anything. If they would have stuck to the original proposal, which was further west of the local area where the people live, and the batteries were put out there as well, somewhere more remote and not in a catchment area, and they did some things like build a big bun wall around them so no chemical or fire could escape or sh should escape. I really don't think it would have come to this. The other thing is all any of us really know about lithium batteries is what we see in the news. And you see a hell of a lot of negative things about them, including the mining of the lithium, the batteries catching fire, the potential for chemical spill and you know it just goes on and on. To sum up I think that all of it could be resolved by simply moving this battery storage system right out of where they're planning to put it and not put all the turbines right in the centre of where people live. If they just stuck with the original proposal I don't think there would have been any problem. Thanks a lot for watching this edition of Farming Live Australia. See you next time.